In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use a histogram to determine distribution of data and then using that to determine appropriate measures of spread and location. So the learning intention for today is to learn how to use a histogram to determine distribution and then decide appropriate measures of location and spread. Hopefully by the end of this video, you'll be able to know how to create a histogram comment on the distribution and then decide what statistical measures are best. So first of all, why do we need graphical summaries like histograms? First of all, they are useful for detecting any patterns or outliers. So because it's a visual representation of the data, you can quite easily spot any patterns that emerge or if there are any values that are known as outliers which means that they kind of stick out from the rest of the data. You can then also start to look at any relationships that are appearing between variables. As one variable increases, perhaps the other variable also increases. And lastly, it's very useful to be able to determine the distribution of data. Now, that's essentially how the data looks, how that data is spread out. What you have to watch out for, though, when it comes to graphical summaries is that not all researchers will interpret a graph in the same way. Given that it's visual, each person might look at it in a slightly different way. So, interpretation from gra graphs alone, that needs to be done with caution, which is why we also use numerical summaries as well. One of the most important graphical summaries that we are going to use in this course is a histogram. The shape of the histogram illustrates the distribution of the data. So a histogram is basically you've got different bars and it tells you the frequency within each range. So for example, in the graph that we've got here, you've got age ranges from 0 to 20, 20 to 24, 24 to 28 and so on. So within each section, that's basically the frequency okay, that of how many times those values appear. And then you can use that graph and that shows you the distribution, so how it's distributed, so where you find the most data, where is most of the data lying. There are three different types of distribution. We get normal distribution, which is also known as a bell curve, that's the one up the top. It is symmetrical about the mean, so it's kind of symmetrical data. It's a nice, even spread. Now, of course, it's never going to be exactly perfect. It's going to look like something that's shown on the screen there, slightly bobbly in places, but you can see that we've got a general symmetrical curve going on that does give that kind of bell shape. Then you can either have data that is skewed to the left or to the right, Skewed to the left means that the slope runs down to the left. So on the left-hand side of the graph, there isn't as much data versus the right-hand side of the graph. Skewed to the right means the slope goes down to the right-hand side of the graph, meaning that most of the data is focused on the left-hand side. Depending on the types of distribution that you have, that determines the type of numerical summary that you're going to use. For normal distribution, we use the mean and standard deviation. But for skewed distribution, we use the median and the interquartile range. The reason for that is because the median isn't really affected by those outliers, whereas the mean would kind of be skewed off by that. So that's why we use the median for skewed distribution. We have to make sure that we identify the type of distribution that we've got before we can then move on and summarise it numerically. What we're going to take a look at now is how to do this using RStudio. So I'm going to hop onto the internet. I've got my RStudio loaded and we're going to take a look at the pulse rates file, which is one of the example questions that we've been using in class. 
So first things first, you need to make sure that you've got the files uploaded. I already have the pulse rate file uploaded down the bottom. Then I need to attach this data onto our studio. And what I do is I type this line of code that we've got on our data book clip, my data, read dot csv open brackets speech marks and then we type in the name of the file which is capital p capital r pulse rates dot csv we click run our data has now appeared on the right hand side and the blue code message has popped up down the bottom so that means it's worked correctly next we need to type attach my data which basically attaches the variable names to our studio run and again that's popped up in blue down the bottom so if we are trying to analyze data so if i click on the my data section we've got different pulse rates and it's basically a survey of people their pulse rates their gender their height and so on if we wanted to analyze pulse one or pulse two and summarize those numerically in order for us to really do that accurately we want to determine the distribution of the data. And to do that, what we do is we plot a histogram. We can plot a histogram using this code. It's hist brackets. Instead of X, it's the variable name. The variable name is capital P pulse one. That's what we're going to do a histogram for. So capital P, notice that it actually appears as a suggested option. It's pulse one we want to select. Then it's comma. COL equals, that stands for basically the colour. So we can pick any colour we like. In the data booklet, it suggests yellow. I'm just going to make it blue. Comma main equals, that is essentially the title of the histogram. So we're going to call it histogram of pulse one. and then close bracket. If we hit run, this should produce a histogram of pulse one. If we look at this, it's quite hard to tell whether this is skewed or if it's normally distributed. If we take a look at it, we can see that it's really slightly normally distributed. It's following that sort of curve but then we've obviously got that large bar that's sticking out at about 70. So this is where it becomes down to the individual person that is, that is dealing with the data to decide whether that's normally distributed or whether it's skewed. Let's take a look at what we would do if we considered this to be normally distributed. So for a normal distribution curve, it's mean and standard deviation that we do. So for mean, all we need to type in is mean brackets the variable name, which is pulse one. If I hit run, that mean now appears down the bottom. So the mean pulse, 73.14 and so on. For us to compute standard deviation, it's SD brackets pulse one, the variable name, hit run. And that's the standard deviation. If we were to consider that this data set was skewed, we would say that it's most likely skewed to the right hand side because we can see that it kind of slopes off to the right. But again, that's open to interpretation. But if we did decide that this was skewed data, we would use median and the quartiles. The code that we use for that is the summary line, now that's the code that's in the data booklet, okay? So summary brackets, pulse one, that provides for you the mean, median, minimum and maximum, upper and lower quartiles, it essentially provides a five figure summary. So the median is 72, notice that that's different from the mean of 73, so it obviously does make a difference what one we're using, and Q3, the third quartile is 80, and the first quartile is 65, with a min and a max value. 
In order for us to compute the interquartile range, we simply take Q3, 80, and subtract it from Q1. So it's 80 minus 65. So that means that the interquartile range would be 15. That's how we use a histogram to determine our appropriate statistical measures. Remember though, using a graph alone to determine normal distribution is obviously open to interpretation, but in an exam scenario, it would most likely be very obvious what type of distribution the graph was following.